Hello everyone. Thanks for coming with us today. We're going to look at Irish swords a little bit. I just completed this one about a week ago to bring out to the Renaissance Fair as one of our stock pieces out there. Uh, it's kind of a one of, but it's based on several pieces that on a trip to Dublin about oh, three, four years ago now, I guess, but uh, I saw some originals and they are a very interesting style of sword, one of my favorites personally. And when you look at the originals, you can see some th details that I wanted to share with you guys about these kinds of swords and how uh, really interesting they are in the family of swords and in looking at swords from that period of time and what the kind of attributes they were after to get these swords. Uh, one of the main things, of course, is the hollow pommel, the ring pommel that you see on many Irish pieces. Now, whether these were cement or uh, evolved from the construction of wheel pommels where it's a ring with plates on it and the plates were just left off for efficiency or you know just never able to get that far in the process however they evolved into that uh, use of the ring for the pommel it's pretty iconic you only really see them in Irish swords maybe one or two other examples floating around where that was done but in the Irish swords we see it as a distinct style of piece that was used but they're very light they're not heavy rings a lot of times when you see uh, people producing them today you will get these just honking big uh, slices of a pipe kind of look to them and in actuality when you see the originals they're very light there's not a lot of material here now, how do you make a sword with a light pommel? You make a light sword. That's what the whole process is. Uh, it's got the iconic kind of flared uh, guard here. Um, this one has uh, some pretty significant langets coming down. A lot of times they would have been just very straight, plain bars across here as well. Um, the blades are not very wide usually on the Irish swords, relatively narrow, and they are light. This piece here, runs just over two and a half pounds or so. Uh, it is basically a long sword. It's designed to be used uh, in hand and a half style of situations, but manipulating the sword with one hand is very easy. Um, it's got a spatulated style point on here, uh, but relatively even taper. Not a lot of taper, but just a little bit as it comes down the sword. Um, some of the single-handed versions of these Ivory swords are very narrow. Uh, almost uh, rapier blade type narrow in the context of how they are constructed and stuff. It's a lot of the same thing. Very light pommels, straight guards that end in flares or twists and, uh, or, or uh, curves and will have a very uh, light look to them. And when you pick them up or you handle one, it is very light. They move very quickly. Now, when you look at the style of combat these individuals were working in, where they are doing a lot of cattle raiding or working as mercenaries, as scouts and raiders. Uh, that's the kind of sword you want. You're not looking for something that's heavy and you got to carry or you have to have servants carrying for you to get when battle comes, they bring out all your heavy weapons and such. These are guys running through the woods with swords, uh, stealing cattle, like I commented, and uh, would be very efficient in a hand-to-hand -hand combat style of, of fight. Um, this one, you can see we've got a brown leather grip on. It's got some risers to give it some detail and to make it uh, look kind of cool. Uh, helps the grip you, you know, purchase of your hand on there. It's got a forward uh, bulge on it so you can feel the sword moving in your hand, but it is a uh, super nice sword, real light. Uh, this one's gonna be out at the Minnesota Renaissance Festival this coming weekend. And uh, if you're interested in Irish swords, it's one of our favorites, we love to do them and uh, this piece is going to be up for sale. So we will talk to you later. Have a good day.